I want us to turn tonight in your Bible, if you have a Bible or a New Testament with you, to the Gospel of Matthew, and we're turning to chapter 8, please. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8. The Lord Jesus is, has just concluded the great Sermon on the Mount. He was the greatest preacher ever was, you know. And what made the Lord Jesus a wonderful preacher is because he preached in a language that people could understand. And then in verse 1 of the 8th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, we read, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. So simple and so great and so attractive was, was the Savior's preaching. They wanted to hear more. And great multitudes followed him, and I'm falling apart up here. Verse 2, And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand and, and, and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And we know that the Lord will bless that reading of his own precious truth. Friends, it doesn't take too long for your life to be turned upside down. A fortnight ago tomorrow, a fortnight ago tomorrow, I rang a man, he's a customer of ours, who had gone into hospital with a sore neck, and he was in with me the day or two before it, and he was, says, there's something wrong with my neck. And I had heard he went into hospital, and I thought to myself, boys, I'd better ring this fellow and see how he was. And rang his phone, not expecting him to answer his phone, but he answered. And I said to him, Dino, that's what you call him. He says, Dino, I believe you were in hospital. Is everything okay? And there was a silence. And he began to cry. For Dean to cry, I knew something was terribly wrong. George, they've told me I've got the big C. You know something, friends? It's getting to the stage now you're almost afraid to ask anybody what's wrong with them. Isn't that right? And this man went into hospital just to get checked out to be told that his days are limited on earth. The good news to arise out of this case is Dean's got saved. Derek Freeborn of Warren Point Baptist Church went to visit him and told him his need of salvation and Dean has trusted the Lord. But you know, friends, your life can be turned upside down in a matter of moments. And the wee world that you know as it is now could soon change for you forever. You know what makes matters worse, friends? At times when our wee world collapses around us, it just seems at times that nobody seems to care. It must have been a tragic day for the man in Matthew chapter 8 to go to the priest to go to the priest and to hear the priest say, you've got leprosy. 
That meant for that man he was excluded from the company, he was excluded from the city, and this disease called leprosy left him outside the city, excluded from everyone, and it left him out there to wither and to die alone. Leaving him out there with no mercy, leaving him out there with no hope, and it was a tragic, dark day for this man in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, to hear the word leprosy. But you know, my dear friend, this evening in this service, the Bible speaks of another disease, another disease that's worse than leprosy. Another disease that's worse than cancer. Believe it or believe it not, the Bible speaks of another disease worse than cancer. It's called sin. And I've got good news. I've got b- tragic news for you. My Bible, which I believe to be the Word of God, says you've got it. Do you know what the Bible says about sin? The Bible says, sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The Bible says that the wages of of sin is death. And my dear unsaved friends sitting in this meeting, listen to me. I love you. And I care too much for you. Not to warn you that if you die in your sin tonight, you'll go to the torments of a Christless hell. Now watch this man in in Matthew chapter 8. He comes desperately. To whom did he come? This man was dying. He was perishing. He had no hope. He was in a hopeless state. Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe you've come to this meeting this evening as a last-ditch effort because you think in your own mind your life isn't worth living anymore. See, that's the way sin leaves us. But this man came desperately. And notice who he came to. He came to the Lord Jesus. Do you know why he came to the Lord Jesus? Because he knew that he was the answer. When you've got the toothache, who do you run to? Do you run to the butcher? Do you know we had a, a dentist on a cloud one time? i tell you the truth, he should have been a butcher. I'm not going to mention his name. He's not the present dentist. <coughs> I always thought this old fellow should have been working for Tommy McCann. Oh, he was desperate. And every time he went to freeze the mouth, he came out with a needle about that length and a bend on it. And when he went to extract the teeth, he didn't know where he was going to pull the tooth or the head off. But, but if you're suffering from the toothache, but dentists, listen, if there's any children here, don't be worried about dentists anymore. They're lovely people. They actually freeze the gum before they put the needle in now. Oh, well, you don't even know they're working at you. I asked my wife, she'll tell you that. She loves the dentist. But you know something tonight, or if your car breaks down, she don't worry, you don't run to, you don't run to the pastor. You go to the mechanic, you go to the person who knows and who can meet the need. You know, this man came to the Lord Jesus. He knew that he could meet my need. I love the way he came. It says there, listen to how he, he, and behold, there came a leper worshipping. Boys, I love the way he came. He came worshipping. He came rejoicing to the feet of the Savior. This old dying leper, he came worshiping. He didn't come complaining. Boy, there's a pile of us good at that, aren't we? He didn't come complaining. He didn't come to the Lord Jesus and complain and say, Lord, why have I to have the leprosy? Why am I the one to have it? He came worshiping. He knew there was hope in this man. He knew there was something about this man that could meet me at the the point of my need, even though I'm dying, even though the law has kicked me out of the city. But this man, there's something about him that I trust. 
I've often thought about this passage and I've often thought about this leper and I said to myself, perhaps when the Lord Jesus was preaching up thunder on the mountainside, perhaps the wind carried some of the sermon towards his direction and he heard something that gave him hope. I believe that was, that's what happened, you know. And the Lord Jesus, remember that great sermon, he said, Ask and it shall be given. He said, Seek and ye shall find. And he said in the great sermon, Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And then he went on to say, For every one that asketh receiveth, and every one that seeketh findeth, and every one that knocketh, the door shall be opened unto him. And I can tell you now, this dying leper said, you know someone, I'm going to take him at his word. I believe every word he says. And I'm going to come to him. Tell me someone, do you believe what the Lord Jesus says? Do you really believe? You know, this man, I believe this is what, what happened. He heard the Lord Jesus, the wind carried the sermon in his life, and faith was born in his soul. And he says, I'm coming to the one who can meet my need. He not only came, he not only came worshiping, he came believing because he says, Thou canst make me clean. You can do it. If there's one man on this earth can do it, that's you. And I believe you. You know, it wasn't how he felt that brought him to Jesus. You know, if we're depending on feelings, he would be like a spiritual jack-in-the-box, wouldn't we? One day you're feeling great, and you're on the mountaintop, and the next day you're down. I don't know whether I'm saved or not saved. There used to be a wee woman I knew, and, 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 you, and when it came to grieving or sorrow, oh, we should never grieve or sorrow. God's greater than our grief. God is greater than our sorrow. We, the children of God, should never grieve. One day I went into the car park and she was sitting crying. And when I heard what had happened, you know, I felt like, I'll not tell you what I felt like. You know what happened? One of the foxes got in and got our wee bantam. And the bantam was blind of an eye. You know, she came, he came believing. Believing that the Lord Jesus could just meet my, my need. Listen to me, unsafe person. The Lord Jesus can meet you at your need tonight, whatever that need is. But the greatest need you have is your sin. And your sin tonight will bring you down into the depths of hell. But thank God there's hope. There's one tonight who can save. There's one tonight who can cleanse. There's one tonight who can make you whole. He came believing. And you know, friend, it was faith that brought him, not his feelings, his faith. Do you believe? Do you believe tonight that the Lord Jesus is the answer for sin? Do you believe tonight that the Lord Jesus is the answer for your life? I can tell you tonight, friend, He is. On the 26th of August, 1985, in St. James's Parish of Carnteel, in Ochnachloy, the Church of Ireland Church, I heard a message that I could tell you made me whole. And I came that night, 20 years of age, and eight days old to be exactly. And I bowed the knee and I asked the Lord Jesus to come into my heart. Listen, don't you think the fall up on the pulpit's green? I discoed and I danced and I carried on around the country and everybody, like everyone else. Did indeed. But I'll tell you one thing. What my days in the world would never compare to my days in the Lord. I can tell you. Oh, I used to suck the devil's dummy tit too. You, you didn't know what the devil's dummy tit looks like, did you? No. It has a fire at one end and a fool at the other. Oh, I was one of them boys. Jeans, Dr. Martin boots. Do you remember the Dr. Martin boots? It took you half an hour to lace them up and took you about an hour to get them off again. But you know, I look back to them days and I thought I had life. But I hadn't life until the Lord Jesus came in. What does the hymn reader say? Life, life, abundant life. Jesus alone is the giver. Praise God. He is the giver. Oh, he's the giver, all right. 100%, I'll tell you. He's the giver. But you know, friend, listen to me. You're diseased with sin, but listen to this. If we say we have no sin, we deceive who? You don't deceive God. You don't deceive God. 
If you say, I have no sin, you know who the Bible says you're deceiving? You're deceiving yourself. Boys, but you are. You're only fooling yourself, love. If you say, you have no sin, but you know, he came desperately. But thank God he was cured miraculously. Look what it says there, first of all. Look what happens there. Verse 3, and Jesus put forth, listen to it, his hand. For someone to touch an old leper, the outcast, with their hand wasn't heard of. Was. But the Lord Jesus done everything contrary. He put forth his hand and touched the uncleansed leper. And you know, the Lord Jesus didn't put on any gloves for health and safety reasons. He knows everyone. You have the word gloves for everyone now. Not right? You need to have the word gloves now to boil an egg. But the Lord Jesus put, took that loving hand and touched the need right where it was. Listen to me, love. If you're here tonight and you're hurting, do you know there's people, there's people tonight who are hurting. There's people tonight who feel unloved. Just like this man. He was an outcast. Nobody, no, nobody cared about this man. He was an outcast. Nobody, nobody cared about him. Maybe you feel nobody cares about you. I can tell you there's one who does. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll tell you, he cares. And he cares more for you than you could even care for yourself. This man came to the Lord Jesus, and when society rejected him, the Savior received him. Oh, look at it. He put forth his hand and touched him. You know, that's the Savior's passion. He's a loving Savior. He loves tonight, listen to me, he loves the lowest of the low. There's nobody low enough that is not within the reach of the Savior's love. You know something? We have a society in Northern Ireland who believed, who believe that nobody cares or loves them. And I, I want to talk to you Christians for a wee moment. We sit in our churches and we dress up nice and we look well, just the way I am now. But out there, there's a society who believe nobody cares or loves them. That's why we're moving ship, as it were. We're taking the lifeboat into different waters. We're taking the lifeboat off the concrete and we're going on to grass. You've never seen the lifeboat in grass yet. We're taking the lifeboat into a field to throw out the lifeline to perishing people to tell them there's, there's life in the risen Lord if they'd only but come. You know the Savior's passion. You know, friend, there's the Savior's promise because he said, I will, I will. You know the Lord Jesus... The Lord Jesus, when he promises something, he never breaks it. Do you know what he says to you tonight? Listen to me. This is lovely. Do you know what he says to you? If you in this meeting tonight is hurting, and, and you feel unloved, listen to what the Lord Jesus says. He says, him that cometh to me, I will in no ways cast out. Isn't that lovely? does not offer you hope to know we have a loving Savior. And he makes that promise to you, friend. Come to me. I will in no ways cast out. And the leper came that was excluded. And he came to the Lord Jesus. And he made the promise, I will. But then there's the Savior's power that says, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. You know, friend, only Christ could cleanse the leper, but only Christ can cleanse the sinner. Only Christ can save you. Only Christ can change you. Only Christ can give you life. God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is not in a church. This life is in his Son. 
And I can tell you tonight, friend, this life is in the Lord Jesus if you'd only but ask. Immediately. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. What can wash away my sin? You know, friend, your sin has you chained. It has you shackled. It's the leprosy of the soul. It's the cancer of the soul. Sin is the spiritual cancer. And we're not pointing you to chemo. We're not pointing you to radiotherapy. We're pointing you to the blood of the Savior. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth all sin. In the mid-60s, there was a young lady from America giving her testimony. She shared in her testimony how her father and two brothers were killed at Pearl Harbor. And she shared with the folk there how hatred never entered her heart for the Japanese airmen who took their lives. She spoke about the Savior's love, but unknown, listen to me, unknown to that girl, the pilot who led the attack into Pearl Harbor was sitting in that meeting. I am not going to try and pronounce his name. I can't do it. But after hearing her testimony, the pilot who led the attack to Pearl Harbor that took so many lives suddenly felt the awful burden of what he's done, what he had done. And she quoted a wee verse, 1 Timothy 1.15, and this is what it says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul said, of whom I am chief. And the Japanese pilot says, Paul wasn't the chief of sinners. He says, I was. Paul didn't do what I do. Do you know what happened? The Japanese pilot that night who led the attack in Pearl Harbor came to saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and himself became an evangelist for many years. You see, this is the beautiful story about the Lord Jesus. This man receiveth sinners. All sorts of sinners. He receives murders. That's hard to swallow, but he does. He receives the people who have struggled with alcohol. Man, he receives them. Man, he loves to put his arms around them. People who are hooked on drugs. People who are lonely and depressed. There's a Savior for them, and I'll tell you what's more. There's a Savior for you. This man found him. Immediately he was cleansed. I often think, if I ever meet the, when I meet the, when I, I believe I'm going to do this. When I meet this leper in heaven someday, will you, will, will you sing a verse or two of a song that'll give a wee word of testimony what happened that day down at the bottom of the mountain? I believe the first words, the first verse he would sing would be this. I'm not going to sing it. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. You know, friend, tonight, the Lord Jesus is still touching lives. He's still receiving the sinners. He's still giving eternal life. And thank God, there'll never be a sinner who Christ will reject. But there will be many sinners who will reject the Savior. You know, friend, this old perishing poor leper, all he had to do was come and believe and trust. And that day he was cleansed and converted. And tonight, that man's experience could be your experience tonight. Oh, friend, 
Get the joy of salvation into your life. And leave this place on tiptoe, as it were. For that's how I left the Church of Ireland that night. I didn't drag my heel. I think the best night ever danced was the way or danced my way home. With the joy of God's salvation. Tonight you can leave this place. Because the Savior who touched the leper is the Savior tonight who longs to touch you if you only but ask him. May the drawing power of the Holy Spirit draw you to believe this this evening and to know what it is to have the joy of sins forgiven. Let's bear in a wee word of prayer together. Father in heaven, we thank and praise Thee tonight. Lord, for Your mercy and for Your grace. Lord, and for Your seeking sinners. I thank You, Lord. You're not willing that any should perish. Lord, You're longing for them to come. We thank You, Lord, this poor leper found life and he found liberty. We pray tonight for those amongst us who are like him, who are still suffering from the cancer of sin, that tonight they'll come to the Lord Jesus and, and ask him to come into their heart to be their Savior. Lord, Lord, we are praying to that end. And Lord, they will. And friend, tonight, if you're here, listen, if, if Bertie and I can be of any help, please, why don't you speak to us? We're here to help you. We're not here to force you. We're here to help you. We're here to talk to you, encourage you as best as we can. We're here, hopefully, to try and answer any questions. But listen, maybe this day was the leper's day. This was his big day. This could be your big night to leave this church tonight liberated from the shackles of sin. Don't leave tonight without the Savior. Tonight he's calling, tonight he's wooing, tonight he's, he's striving. Oh, come to him and know what it is to get life eternal. Trust the Savior this evening. He's calling and he's waiting and he's watching. And all you've got to do is simply trust him. Lord, tonight I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus, save those tonight who are searching. Save those tonight who are lost. Lord, we pray that they may leave this place with a spring in their step, with a song in their heart and a smile in their face, knowing what it is to be cleansed and to be saved. Lord, we're just simply leaving it all with thee, for we pray in our Saviour's name. Amen.